Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Dan. And for this week's episode, we are continuing our build up to Tokyo with another member of Team GB. And what a performance she put in at trials to qualify, Dan, under some really, really tough circumstances. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to talk to her. And especially interesting, I'm interested in hearing how she coped with being in such strict trial bubbles until the final day. I'm really interested Mm. to find that out. Yeah, me too, me too. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, Sarah Vasey. How are you doing, Sarah? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. Great stuff. So today, I think, like we said, we're going to touch upon a little bit about bubble environments because juniors are starting to experience them a little bit more. Um, As we saw at Glasgow this weekend, maybe there's some advice you can pass along. And then we'll touch upon your performances at Europeans and Glasgow and look ahead towards Tokyo a little bit. So first of all, I think it's worth congratulating you on making the Olympic team um, for what has been a really, really difficult year and some really tough racing conditions in London. You must have been really happy overall just to get on the team full stop. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said in my interview afterwards, it was such a long week. And I was kind of in two minds about what to do because obviously all my friends were swimming and I wanted to watch it. Like, obviously we couldn't go down to the pool, but watch it online. But Mm. then I was also like, I don't want to be like too invested in it all before I've even swam. But I ended up watching the whole week because it was really good. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, trials were so good. I mean, you were there, you were racing on the last day pretty much. So you had to wait for five days stuck in a hotel room. So what was it like? I mean, it, it can't have been easy. Yeah, it was a bit boring. (laughs) To be honest, like, I think I went into it really prepared and I'd, like, spoken with Mel about it before, about different strategies to have and whatnot. And, yeah, I felt prepared going into it and we knew, we knew what the, what the stakes were and I knew I had to keep a cool head all week. So I I went there with lots of books, lots of puzzle books. (laughs) I tried to talk to someone different every night on the phone just to try to get some sort of interaction, but... I mean, whatever I did paid off in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, were there any, was there ever an opportunity for you to race the 200 heats and just swim 100? Or was that not, not in the question given the strict bubbles? We kind of spoke about entering because I did, weirdly, I had the qualification time somehow. <laughs> um, <laughs> we spoke about entering and then kind of doing what I did at Manchester, the first Manchester yeah. and like just j- going for 100 time. But then I just thought if if I go really fast and get the time, like I kind of don't want to have that expectation waiting around a few more days for the end of the week. And mm. like the other end of that, if I went and swam really slow, it mm. would just play on my mind and just make me feel worse. So I think we made the right call in the end. Well, what are the rules on that? So if you were to do a 200 meter race, but just split at 100 and then get DQ'd for not doing a second 100, would that time then count? Or have you actually got to do it in the actual 100 meter race? No, no I think... In the actual 100, yeah. Yeah, yeah. British... You have to do it in the final as well, don't you? Trials as well. <laughs> mm, man, I can't have been easy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you weren't even allowed to see Max, were you? You weren't allowed to kind of... Because you can't share a room at trials. You're kind of completely locked away. Yeah. Would it have been nice to go to poolside and see it? Because you said you watched it on the TV and there was there's some really, really fast racing. Do you think if yeah. you had gone to the pool, it had given you more energy? Or, I mean, you've made the team, so you, your strategy has worked either way. I don't know, really, because in 2016, it was the same. And I was, um, I was at City of Derby at the time and we all were up there for the whole week because while well, Mel was up there the whole week and we like all stayed in an apartment together. And like, it was really good fun, but... I ended up watching swimming every night on poolside mm. and it is, it is like emotionally draining. It sounds a bit silly, but it is. Uh, so kind of, I think being able to watch it like in your bed through a laptop just made you kind of distant from it a little bit. But okay. yeah, for some of the swims, I wish I could have been down there because they were so good. Like I would have just loved to have witnessed it in person. 
I kind of like the fact that they had the announcer and he was trying to build a bit of an atmosphere. I mean, you still had the swimmers and coaches on Paul's side, but he was doing his very best and all credit to him, to be honest with you. But Effort um, the professional. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, younger swimmers have now been racing again um, and they're going to be facing bubbles like they did in Glasgow like the last week. Um, what advice would you pass on to them? Um, I think just take lots of things to do because... And I like I don't really like being on my phone a lot and stuff. So I think as tragic as it sounds, like taking like a puzzle book is actually just quite nice. And then you're not kind of because I feel like when you're on your phone, if you're just scrolling, you're also kind of looking at the time. Mm. So that doesn't help either when you can't do anything. You're just trapped in your room. So yeah, just take lots of things to do. And like with meal times as well. In, I mean, in Glasgow, we could eat like in the dining halls. So you could eat with people, whereas for the previous meets, it was like take get your food on our train, take it to your room. So I'd always kind of like text my friends, like what time they were going down to get their dinner. So you could kind of talk while you were in the queue sort of thing, just to try and get some sort of interaction. <laughs> There's no like FaceTimes over meals or anything like that going on. <laughs> that would have been a good idea, actually. <laughs> what a crazy time, eh? Crazy. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think any of the swimmers' performances were affected by bubbles? Because I... Like we said, all of the swimmers did amazing at trials and it was the first time that it's been like a full week long bubble for them. But do you think any of them could have gone better, faster if there wasn't this bubble around? I don't really know. That's, kind of like, that's quite a hard question to answer because well, we'll, never, we'll never know the answer. Mm -hmm. but I just think, I think everyone just handled it so well. And I think having the prep meets in Manchester, although they were only for a weekend, just got you used to being in that environment which is why I yeah. think Glasgow was really good to kind of get the juniors to be in that environment as well and just to practice all that stuff because, I mean, that's what meets are going to be like for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Would you say that, um, especially for the juniors who are just starting racing again, it's going to take a few meets to get used to it? Did you find you finally found your footing by the time you had raced after Manchester? Um, I don't really know. Like, the first meet, I was just ex I was just excited to race again, to be honest. Mm. And like my heat swim was around about where I thought I would be. And then to, when I moved on in the final, I was like, okay, right, this is actually like this is going quite well now. <laughs> yeah. when I started getting excited for for trials and stuff, but. Oh, yeah amazing. Well, we want to talk about um, Europeans, of course. They were now. When was that? Three weeks ago maybe yeah. even a month ago now, I can't even remember how long it goes. It goes around quite quick. Um, some amazing achievements from the whole British team at Budapest. Um, I think it was our most successful British Europeans ever, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, mm. How proud are you of your own performance and the team in general? Yeah, I absolutely loved Budapest. It mm. was just, I think because everyone has had such a tough year, for us all to kind of come together and swim as a team was just really special and I mean, it helps when everyone swims fast as well. <laughs> that but does like, help, that yeah. That momentum just kind of carried through the whole week and built. And I, I said on the last day, like, oh, I kind of wish my 100 was now because, like, it was just, so, like, I just had such a good time and everyone was just really backing each other. And every time someone came back and they'd won a medal or had a good swim, like, everyone was, like, cheering and stuff and just things like that. I feel like we haven't, we haven't been able to have that kind of environment for such a long time. It was just, yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, we spoke to Anna last week and she said kind of the team environment in Team GB is the best she's ever experienced while she's been part of the setup. And I mean, it only bodes well for Tokyo kind of cheering each other on, especially if you are stuck with each other's company for the whole of the Olympics. It's, it's, it's good that you all get along. Yeah. Yeah, no, I have to agree. It's like it was I mean, I kept kind of comparing it to Europeans in Glasgow, like for like my personal swims and stuff. But then like the team was the team was massive for Glasgow and it didn't feel like you got to kind of mix with that many people. But Budapest was just great. And like the juniors as well, like the younger girls who were doing the relays and stuff, like they were mm. all just mm. I think they were just loving it as well and so easy to talk. So just yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> What was the um, bubble situation? Was it pretty much the same as what we got over here? Um, it was a little bit more relaxed in that you could eat dinner with people. Like you didn't have to take meals okay. up to your room. And we had um, like GB kind of had like an area where like people were using the Norma text or getting massage and stuff. So people kind of hung out there, but obviously all distance and with the mask on and stuff. But you could have mm. that interaction rather than being just in your room. 
Mm. Something we said when we were watching the meet and we did live streams talking about it afterwards was the focus of, for Team GB at that meet wasn't times. It wasn't even medals, really. It was just about getting some racing under your belt against international guys. For you as a swimmer, do you come away from that meet and look back at your times and be like, well, I'm further ahead than I thought I would be? Does it, does it give you confidence or do you just kind of stick to the mindset that you went in with? Um, I mean, it's kind of hard to ignore times because that is, that is what swimming is based on at the end of the day. Um, but no, it was a massive confidence boost. I think we were kind of in no man's land because we, like, we weren't rested for it, but we kind of hadn't done enough work to accumulate lots of mm. fatigue. So we, were, like, we weren't rested, but I guess we were still kind of fresh off the back of trials. And I just think everyone really surprised themselves with how they did. Like me and Molly were talking before the 100 breaststroke and we were like looking at the entry times and we were like, oh, it's, it's going to be quite fast to make it. But like, oh yeah, I'm probably going to have to go 67. And then we both went to 66 and we were like, what? Like it was so <laughs> unexpected. It was, it was yeah, a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a low 66 as well, which is really, really quite good. Yeah, like I had, I, in my head going into that, I was thinking if I can be where I was at the second Manchester meet, I'd be really happy. I didn't think I'd be on and near my best time. So yeah, it was a massive surprise. And just, I just feel like I've learned so much about my swimming in the past like 18 months and how to properly race my race. Like that sounds a bit silly, but I feel like before I've always been like, right, I'll max the first 50 and then just try and hold on. Whereas now, like, I know I've got that speed. So Mm. I just try and like control it as much as I can down that first 50. So just racing more and more just gives me more time to practice that as well. Deja vu. That's kind of exactly what Anna Hopkins said to us Almost la- to worse, last yeah. week. Yeah, <laughs> she was like, well, we do I, used be... <laughs> <laughs> "I used to be." She said she used to be scared of the hundred, and now she's very comfortable with easy speed. It, I don't mm. know. It's almost like the British women are adding layers of layers of experience onto previous racing, and then hopefully Tokyo kind of is the the pinnacle yeah. of it all. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you go away slightly disappointed that you didn't? get a medal or like you said is it all times like initially I was I was annoyed and because there was like, such well, a close margin as well yeah it's hard um, not to be when it's that close but then but when I turned around and I first saw my time I was like oh PB like bro and then I saw <laughs> fourth and I was like and then I saw how close it was and I was like oh man but I think to say that we weren't rest and whatever and I got I got a best mm. time and that's it was my best time from 2017 as well. So it's been there for ages. So to have broken that, like you have to come away, please, yeah, really. Definitely. I mean, in our eyes, you got bronze, if we're perfectly honest, because the person <laughs> in third just doesn't doesn't exist in the world of swimming in our eyes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you're at, at that point, you're what two months out from the games, you're setting PBs. It, it must all be flowing. And then Glasgow comes quite ar- around quite quickly. And times this weekend weren't quite at the same level, but I think it was very obvious everyone was pretty tired. You are all training hard at this point now. Yeah, I think, I, like, I was disappointed, but I think that's because because I surprised myself in Budapest. I kind of had in my head that the same thing might happen again. Mm. But realistically, like, I'm, I'm, with all the racing, I did, like, 10, 11 sessions last week. Like, you're not going to be flying off the back of doing mm-hmm. that. So I think it's still like around where I wasn't the Manchester meet, which is, I think is a good indicator. And for the training that we have been doing as well, again, like you can't come away disappointed from it. Like if I'd have told myself two years ago that I'd be swimming 67s unrested, I'd have been well happy. So mm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's pretty good going. Are you still doing gym work now or is it now starting to lower the intensity from, I think it's like six weeks out now, isn't it? No, I think we're still building at the moment. Still going. Oh, wow. (laughs) I think we've got like two more weeks and then we start to come down. Okay, yeah. I can't wait for that. (laughs) (laughs) It's every summer's dream, a taper, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Is there much racing that's going to happen behind the scenes? Are you going to be doing a lot of stand-ups because there's no more meets now until Tokyo? I don't think so. We've not spoken about doing any stand-ups. And to be honest, we've only got four weeks until we go. Mm-hmm. and like it's just it works with Glasgow being the weekend that it was because I came home on the Saturday night it meant I got Sunday and then I was back in Monday morning so I've got like a four week 
block of work, which I think we need. So no, I don't mm. think we'll be doing any stand-ups, just normal, really hard sessions. <laughs> <laughs> was it good preparation, Glasgow? Because of course it was finals in the morning. So do you feel like you're mm. completely set and ready mentally? Yeah, like we tried quite a bit of stuff about getting up like four hours before you race. And then, so like for the 50, I did like a less intense kind of morning routine. So I just did like some mobility. And then before the 100, I trialed like going on a bike and doing some spikes and then just and doing like um, more activation work, okay. which I think worked a lot better. And I kind of knew going into it that I was going to prefer the second kind of routine that we chose but you have to we had to kind of trial both just to see but yeah, yeah. I think it gave us a good opportunity to practice that that kind of stuff about getting up early and being ready for morning finals yeah so that was the main thing really to take away from Glasgow rather than any sort of times I I don't know I think we spoke to a few of the guys who were there who were they're not concerned but they were disappointed um but like you said it's all about the race preparation that that was yeah. the main thing to take away yeah, like Glasgow was more about learning, learning anything more than times. Mm. Well, that's how I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so if we if we look ahead to Tokyo now, um, how excited are you? It's only six weeks away. Are you starting to get sleepless nights? Is it anything like that in in the like mirror coming? Yeah. No, I am I'm really excited. I think like lockdown just gave me like a different kind of perspective on swimming and it's something mm. that I've always done and I definitely took it for granted so having that time away from the pool just like gave me time to reset my mind and realize that I do I do really enjoy swimming and I do care about how I do um mm. so I'm just I'm really looking forward to it because it's I mean it's what you dream of as a kid making the Olympics and I've done mm. it so I'm just really excited to get out there and swim fast <laughs> Would you say the year delay has, has actually helped you, hindered you, or made no difference at all, really? I think it's definitely helped me, okay. like, mm. mentally more than anything. But as I said, it just gave me time to reset. And I think I was swimming well before we went into lockdown, like at the Edinburgh meet, which was the last one that we did. It was the fastest I'd swam since, like, 2017, I think. So, like, I was swimming well, but I don't think, I don't think mentally I was in the right place. Whereas now, mm. like... I really care about how I do. And I think that's how I've, like I was saying about how I've learned more about like my race craft. And I think mm. that's because I don't really take it for granted anymore. Whereas before I was like, Oh, another weekend of racing. Whereas now mm. I actually think about what I want to do and what kind of processes, process goals that I want to achieve and things like that. Mm. I guess it, it kind of put you in the position where you have to be like deadly, deadly serious about the sport to continue in what was a really tough, tough training environment. It, I don't know it probably brought out the best of and you found the swimmers rise to the surface that were going to get there does that make sense yeah I think a lot of people like were the same as me and that it just gave them time to reset and kind of like reignite that fire but mm. like it was hard like and I had I had a week when I really struggled in lockdown because mm. we just we didn't really know what was going on and I was like in my garage doing gym work and I was like why why am I doing this like like the Olympics have been postponed, but we didn't know when they were going to be and whatnot. And I just, I, I just had to start, I just came off, we were on a Zoom call doing gym and I just came off the call and then Mel texted me like, are you okay? And I was like, no, <laughs> like what are we doing? <laughs> so like, I just, I hit a real low, but she like talked me around and said, you know, it's completely normal to feel like this. Like it's so unknown. And I think that was the thing that got me. I was like, why am I putting my body through this? something that i don't even know what the end goal is mm. but i yeah. got through that week so we're all good <laughs> yeah that was the hardest thing for me because you just can't see the finish line yeah i was yeah. doing the same sort of thing of doing i was trying to have a routine at home i was doing some <laughs> exercising and all that sort of stuff it lasted for about three weeks and then it just i don't know that's that fourth week killed me and i ended up doing nothing and then started eating and it went downhill from there on but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you're still barely doing any swimming, Dan, and yet you're doing the Great North Swim this weekend. I know. I'm actually, well, but by the time this goes out, we're racing tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah. It goes out <laughs> on Thursday. So, man, it'll be good. It'll be fine. The weather's all right. So it's okay. <laughs> um, what are your, your personal aims when it comes to Tokyo, Sarah? Um, I'd love to, like, I'm very realistic. I'm not going to say I'm going to win Olympic gold because, I mean, I'd love it if it did happen, but realistically, it's probably not um so I'd love I'd love to make the final of the 100 breaststroke and I think that's more than achievable as well mm. um 
But I think watching watching the girls medley relay in Budapest was unbelievable. And I just mm. thought I really want to be a part of that. <laughs> like, yeah. They just yeah, we had... so well. And I think I think the girls' relays are often underestimated. Mm. And I don't really know why, because every, well, know every, why. every relay in Budapest that had a girl in won. Like mm. yeah. 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 they won gold, yeah. Yeah. So I just I really want to be a part of that. I think that'll be such an amazing medal opportunity. And I just I'd love to be a part of a team with them girls. So how's that going to work? Because of course it's either between you or Molly, I'm assuming, for that breaststroke leg. How's it going to work? Because you do pretty much similar times. Yeah, I think it'll be like the same as what it was in Budapest. Like whoever swims faster gets the time. That's the only kind of mm. that gets the spot. That's the kind of only fair way to do it. So mm. yeah, so. yeah. I mean, we had that race down in Budapest as our race of the meet because every swimmer in that final swam, swam basically the perfect time. They couldn't have swam yeah, any better. It was unreal. <laughs> yeah. I was like screaming in the stands, like go on. <laughs> <laughs> that we was were talking time, uh, fifty, so I. Like just missed out on a medal. So I said to the girls before they went round, I was like, come on, get me a gold. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> <laughs> well, Anna said the team was absolutely bouncing all over the place. They were buzzing. So um oh, yeah. I really ho- yeah. I hope fingers crossed you get onto the team. If if not, you're gonna be part of the re- the heats at least, aren't you? So yeah, I would have thought it's gonna be working so. that way. Yeah. yeah. So something we wanted to touch upon slightly before we kind of end is your friendship with Molly and Abby. Because we saw it at trials when you qualify for the 100 breaststroke. There's obviously an incredibly strong bond between the three of you. So why don't you kind of touch upon the journey you've gone through together? Because I know you've been training since you were young kids. Yeah, so we were all at Deventio together when we were younger. Um, but I said we weren't really that close as a three. And I was actually really good friends with Abby's older sister, Lucy, um, mm. And like, we won our first national medal together in a relay. <laughs> um, but then we all moved to Loughborough like at different times. And then there's, there's just been a lot of girls that have kind of come in and out of the centre. And us three seem to have been there like the longest. So I don't know. We're just, we're just really good friends. And it's like, I love them to bits. And to do this, like to go to the Olympic Games with your two best friends is just anything I could have yeah. dreamed of. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Does a lot of credit have to go to the the coaches at Deventio to to put you like stepping stones almost? Yeah, I think a lot of people kind of joke about the water in Derbyshire because there's a lot of Derbyshire swimmers <laughs> who seem to do quite well. Um, but I think the program was just a really good setup, and like mm. I was at I joined City of Derby when I was like six or something. I was really young, um, and then it was just like the pathway that you kind of went on that you went into Deventio, um, mm-hmm. and then it was. Like 2016, I moved back to go with Mel because Andy Manley, the head coach, was leaving. Mm. And then I could either stay or leave. And I just, I felt like I needed a change, really. And I I felt a lot older than everyone else in that programme. So I just thought a change would be good for me. And so I went back to Derby and started working with Mel again. Yeah, we spoke to the head coach now, Jamie Main, because we kind of, we had to get him onto the podcast because we're from down south we don't kind of have that feeder club kind of set up the uh up north with the davencios um and i know there's it's other Sheffield clubs and... like it yeah, yeah. so it's, it's just a I really like interesting it. setup to get your head around when you haven't been involved in something like that and it works it really does work because they're still yeah. churning out really good swimmers if you look at jacob whittle and mia yeah. slevin now mm-hmm. there's, there's some great swimmers coming out of that sort of setup yeah well i think like it was kind of good to have like a goal is that when you're younger like I remember getting my invitation letter to Ventio and I was like absolutely buzzing I was like oh my god like I'm doing early morning training like thinking it was good. <laughs> little did I know <laughs> <laughs> like to kind of have that like as your goal when you're like 11 or 12 I think is really good to get into a performance squad and yeah like I mean the proof is in the pudding everyone's done really well mm. yeah definitely yeah. well we've talked about a lot we've gone through a lot I think that's kind of a good place to kind of end this podcast this week. If you don't mind, Sarah, we usually finish our podcast with some quick fire questions so that our listeners can get to know you just that slight bit better. Does that sound good for you? Yeah. Okay. So what is your favorite event? 100 breasts. Who is your swimming idol? I don't really have one. That's a bit of a boring answer. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, it's more interesting than you think. Um, What's your proudest moment in swimming? I think make, making the Olympic team and then having Molly and Abby there was really special. Mm, yeah. Um, what's the hardest set you've ever done? 
or we had one a couple of months ago in the build up to trials and it was awful like I would actually dread going on a Monday night <laughs> <laughs> it was like a load of um like front end for time so you'd go for like 20 seconds and then you'd do a back end 15 you'd just do that as many times as you could and it was just pure hell <laughs> oh my god so how how many did you in the end or did you just lose count I can't remember now I think I did like eight rounds or something. It was like a load of front end 20 seconds and a load of back ends. Oh, it was gross. But, I mean, it worked. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Let's hope it's not in in the next four weeks. Let's hope it doesn't come back up for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and if you were to go on a road trip, you have three spaces in the car. You can take <laughs> friends, family or celebrities. Who would you take? Like if I was going right now... Yeah. I'd take Molly and Alvin. I'd, I'd probably have to take Max one time. <laughs> <laughs> Is he stood over your shoulder saying... <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Sarah, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for giving up your evening to speak to us. Um, good luck for the next kind of four, five weeks in the build-up to Tokyo. We're, we've got our eyes on you, as obviously, for Tokyo as well. Um, and good luck for the Olympics. Yeah, we can't wait Thank to see how you go. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good luck. I'm, I'm, I hope you look forward to taper in about two weeks' time. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that rounds up this week's episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. Like we said during this podcast, we are racing the Great North Swim this week. So we are going to leave our fundraising link in the description if you want to donate to the Mind Charity, which is for mental health. Um, it's a cause very close to our hearts. And if you click on the link, you'll read a little bit more about our story and our connection to them. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so on YouTube, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. It's free to do so. And you will be notified of any new podcast that we put up. From myself, Scott, from Dan, we will see you guys next week when hopefully we have recovered from the Great North Swim. Let's hope it goes well, Dan. Hopefully the weather stays nice. But yeah, fingers crossed. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.